So why do we profess that God is a maker of heaven and earth? And what ramification does this have on the way we see the world and ourselves? My brothers and sisters, it's great to be with you again as we delve back into the creed on this Creed 40. And today in the sixth session, we are talking about God the Father as maker of heaven and earth. We have a creating Father. A Father God who creates by wisdom and love. We believe that God created the world according to his wisdom, to the plan that he had set forth from the foundation of the world. That he creates not out of necessity, and not out of some blind fate or chance, that this is well-ordered, well-purposed, in his love, in his goodness for us. But here's the thing. We believe that God the Father, out of his free will, wants his creatures, especially humanity, to share in his being, in this wisdom and goodness that, as God created the world in his wisdom and goodness, he is now allowing us, who are made in his image and likeness, to share in this wisdom and goodness in the way we live. In fact, we are called to imitate God in the way we procreate, in the way we create, doing so in wisdom and in true love. My brothers and sisters, we believe that God created everything out of nothing. And this is really, really important because it's not like creation is some side effect of God's being or some emanation or outgassing or something like that. It's not like he needed any help to create or use something that already pre-existed. God did so out of nothing freely. Freely. Just like love must always be free. We believe that God creates an ordered and a good world. We see this in Genesis where God creates a world step by step over the six days of creation. And it's not like we believe that God created the world in six literal 24-hour days. No, that's not what Genesis is trying to show. But that God created the world in order and each step is good. My brothers and sisters, the world is good, but is subject to our own sin, our own folly, because we have been given dominion over the world. God has entrusted it to us. But that the order and the goodness of the world is still very much manifest, despite our, our sinfulness. But here's the thing. It's not like God just left us a world and said, go do what you want. Because God, while he transcends creation, he's not part of it. He's completely separate from it. He's completely otherly from us who are creatures. Is also very much present to us as creatures. So you can't say that God is like some clockmaker who got it ticking and then left in some kind of deistic type of God. Which frankly is what most people believe in today, to be honest. Most people believe in some higher power, some mysterious power that we really can't know, some deeper purpose, deeper thing. Many people say, oh, you know, the Big Bang Theory that every all creation started with an explosion. Yeah, so God created the explosion and then backed away has nothing to do with it. That's not what we're saying here in the creed. God is present to it. In fact, that God upholds and sustains creation is essential here. You know, it's like the old song we learned in Catechism. He's got the whole world in his hands, yes, I'm singing, whole wide world, in his hands, that God sustains and upholds us, that God in his love continues to hold all of creation in his hands, if you will, sustaining us, continuing to give us his grace, that God is continually willing our existence. And the moment that he stops willing our existence, poof, we're out of existence. So this word, maker of heaven and earth, in Latin is actually factorum. And factor means one who makes or shapes something. The word factor, which is the verb version of factorum, the noun version, means to put things into place, to put things into order. And of course, this language falls very, very short of what God is actually doing here. Because God isn't someone who just shapes and molds things. No, he created everything out of nothing. It's God not just merely putting things into place that were already there. No, God created everything on nothing. He created everything, everything according to his wisdom and his love. And so we have no language for like a maker in any language that even comes close to 
expressing the reality of the way God creates. In fact, even in our human experience, we have no way of coming close of comprehending how God makes things. I'll be honest with you, I, I like to be a little bit crafty myself, and it seems like when I'm making things, all I'm doing is cutting apart other things and bashing them together and gluing and whatever. But I'm always taking something and then making it into something else. That's not how God creates. God creates everything out of nothing. And it's not like how we, being crafty, just kind of see how it goes and see how it develops and copy other things that we already know. There was nothing for God to copy, per se, when he made creation. Although he used his own divine essence and being who he is as the blueprint, his goodness, his love, to order all creation. And so one can say that God has his fingerprints on everything. My brothers and sisters, the reason we say maker of heaven and earth has a very, very important defense of the faith, and that is against the Gnostics. You see, the Gnostics came about in the early church. The Gnostics taught a lot of crazy things. In fact, we'll be talking about a lot of these crazy things as we go through Creed 40. But just to say, the Gnostics believed that the material world was bad. In fact, they even went so far to say, well, God is the creator of uh, our souls, but not the material stuff, because the material stuff is bad. And so to say that God is a maker of heaven and earth is really against the Gnostics. They'd have no problem with saying God is a maker of heaven, but that earth, no, 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 that's bad. We need to escape it. We need to escape earth to get to heaven. And how many people think that we need to transcend earth, transcend earthly experience to get to heaven? This is not a holy thing. It is our experience here on earth, even in its sufferings. But it's an experience of living here on earth that allows us to really come to know God's goodness and order and love so that we are ready for heaven. You also have science. Science, you know, survival of the fittest. Those animals are most adaptable. That life that is most adaptable survives. But here's the thing. It's not like God has just put us at war with one another, at war with other things in creation. God upholds and sustains. And so my brothers and sisters, our supreme God, who is both father and creator, will never abandon the righteous power to the wicked. It's like he just leaves us to say whoever is most evil, whoever is most cunning and most strong is going to win. God doesn't abandon us to that. I mean, just look at the history of ancient Israel. They should have been crushed and destroyed so many times, but God continued to uphold and sustain them through the covenant that he had with them. But it's difficult to imagine for us a better way, a more confident way to begin building a civilization, you know, than to recite the creed. Because it's from the standpoint of the creed, when we profess this faith, we're already saying that the world, which is already good, is becoming a much better place. That God is leading us to help us make the world a much better place, to transform earth to be more like heaven, even though the earth is created good. So my brothers and sisters, in many ways, there is no escaping or waiting for some pie in the sky or trying to make our entry into heaven happen now, like just be suicidal and that somehow is a good thing. But we are called to live our lives imitating God the Father Creator. Imitating His wisdom and His love and the way that we live by that wisdom, that order, and His love in this life as well. So when we say maker of heaven and earth, we are seeing how God created both heaven and earth good. And we are acknowledging that God created us good, created the world good, and that he is upholding, sustaining, and loving us as we continue forward because he is a creating father. My brothers and sisters, we will continue on our next session talking more about God the Father's creation, more about the Gnostics. In many ways, this talk and the next talk are part one and part two. And I so look forward to you joining me for the next talk. So please like, subscribe, leave a comment, let your friends know about this, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.